Hello friends, I hope you are well. It's the end of January and we are well into 2023. So I do hope you've had a great start to the new year. Welcome to The Dirt Report, the tech and telco news show with stories from all around Australia. Today we have some great tales of tribulations to share. Today we have the ACCC going after online influencers and NBN Satellite launches new speed plans for businesses, not for the general folk. And I'll tell you why in a moment. So if you like this video, then make sure to smash the like button. And if you'd like to support us and get notified of all new videos, then please consider subscribing. Let's start the video by rolling the intro. My favorite agency of all agencies in Australia, the ACCC, but this time my people are in its crosshairs. According to the latest ACCC media announcement, that's of course linked below, the agency is targeting online influencers to protect the consumer. And you may be wondering, protect them from what exactly? Well, being influenced a little too much. And funny thing is, I absolutely agree. But how did we get here? Well, each year the ACCC announces a list of complaints and enforcement priorities. These priorities outline the areas of focus for the ACCC's compliance and enforcement activities for the following year. As part of the 2022 to 2023 compliance and enforcement priorities, the ACCC is prioritizing both consumer and fair trading issues in relation to issues relating to manipulative or deceptive advertising and marketing practices in the digital economy. Now then, on to influencers. These are folks with the ability to influence potential buyers of a product or service by promoting or recommending the items on social media. That initially isn't a bad thing, but the problem, as the ACCC points out, how these influencers present those products and how they suggest you to buy them. You see, there are industry practices and guidelines which provide a standard for Australian influencer businesses and advertisers. For example, the Australian Association of National Advertisers provides guidelines on what can be considered clearly distinguishable advertising. Then the Australian Influencer Marketing Code of Practice also outlines best practice for companies engaging in influencer marketing, including in disclosing said advertisements. Now, there are two fundamental rules of advertising and selling. First of all, you must not engage in conduct that is likely to be misleading or deceiving, and you must not make false or misleading claims or statements. So from my experience in education and media law, when doing video reviews of tech products like I do, I need to clearly state if I am being paid for this video, this is generally called a sponsorship or a sponsored video. And then if it's not sponsored, I need to let the people know who gave me this product. For example, I bought it myself or the product was sent to me for review by company X. Now there is also a tag inside YouTube when you upload a video that if you tick, it is a sponsored video which turns off adverts, some of them, not all of them, but adds a watermark in saying that it's sponsored content. It's honestly super easy to make sure you're being compliant and I don't believe there is a big gray area to it, especially in YouTube, maybe somewhere else. Let's have a think about that in a second. This way you, as the audience, can make up your mind about my bias towards this product. Am I being paid to say good things about it? Am I being paid to tell things about it? Is it an editorial? They already do that in newspapers, so it has to translate into social media. Now, the ACCC is targeting sectors where influencer marketing is kind of peaking uncontrollably, in particular with fashion, cosmetics, travel, health and fitness, and well-being. Now, to be clear, gaming and technology is mentioned too, but from the Facebook post the ACCC used to ask people for specific feedback on advertisements that bothered them in the social media space, fashion, beauty, health, and well-being were at the top. So here's what Gina Cass Gottlieb, chairperson of the ACCC said. With more Australians choosing to shop online, consumers often rely on reviews and testimonials when making purchases, but misleading endorsements can be very harmful. It is important social media influencers are clear if there are any commercial motivations behind their posts. This includes these posts that are incentivized and presented as impartial, but are not. The ACCC will not hesitate to take action where we see consumers are at risk of being misled or deceived by a testimonial, and there is potential for significant harm. 
This action may include following up on misconduct with compliance, education, and potential enforcement activities as appropriate. To add to that, the statement says they are targeting influencers of many audience sizes, from micro channels like this to very large Instagram or TikTok channels. So personally, I have seen this over and over again with health and well-being products, specifically in adverts on Instagram for some reasons. It starts with, hey guys, look what I found in this dingy shop down this alleyway in Melbourne. It'll change your life. But the truth is the brand is paying that influencer for airtime and for each and every sale via their links. That influencer, and I hate that word because it kind of sounds like the car salesman, they are basically deceiving their audience for money and doubly so it also makes for more interesting content if it's not, you know, sponsored. So there's a lot of win-win for the influencer if they obviously could create content like that. Let me know below if you have come across any videos or posts like this. Definitely to keen to hear about it. Now, here is the big part and I can attest to it too. Brands don't always specify for you the influencer to follow the rules. In fact, many don't specify to say, hey, this is a sponsored product or make sure to let the audience know where you got this product from. All they do is make sure that they have a link that people will follow to buy the product and they also want you to talk about this, this and this and that. Now, they act as if they don't care what you do with the product or deal, they turn almost a blind eye to it. Now, knowing what the outcome will be, they just want you to share authentic content as per their email. So there is two sides to this. And so the ACCC is also going after the big brands who are not acting in good faith when requesting influencers to advertise their product as they would when using an advertising agency to advertise their product. Now, on my side, I get a lot of emails from random tech companies all over the world wanting me to share their products with you. All of them ask for authenticity and truthful videos. Now, obviously, depending if it is a product I even want to review, my reply to them is always, I don't charge for review videos, so I get to say what I want. Do you want to send me the item? I'll do a video review. And most of the time, at this point in time, they don't even get back to me. Those that do and accept it, are mostly happy with that outcome because they also believe in their product. Some even accept any criticism as feedback, but some are not happy when I tell the truth or I find inconvenient truths about the product. The amount of times I have received angry emails after posting a video review from the companies, they're asking me to edit the video or even just take it down completely because they don't agree with my thoughts or it seems a little bit negative towards their product or brand. Well. Tough luck, you asked for authentic and honest reviews. Anyway, I digress. I'm glad to see this because the amount of fake positive reviews of products that are online on Facebook, Twitter, and, and Instagram have always irked me. There's people telling me how great it is and there's no notice they're saying it's sponsored or they're being paid to do so. They just say, it's fantastic, you should buy it, check out the links below. But maybe now, at least in Australia, you and I, because I too watch a lot of product reviews, before I buy anything, well, maybe one day we'll be able to trust the videos a bit more. Let me know your thoughts below. Let's move on, NBN. As you can imagine, there are many businesses that require internet access, but are physically nowhere near the good old copper cable. And while many have turned to Starlink, NBNCO still supports businesses with their satellite services. Last week, NBNCO announced a slew of changes through the speed tiers for business satellites. Now, aside from internet speeds, NBNCO's business satellite suite offers a few interesting features. Here's two of them really caught me. First off, access to bandwidth service layer, specifically designed for customers with high capacity and committed bandwidth requirements along with wholesale product features that allow integration to business critical corporate wide area network environments. Now, the second one is virtual ISP, which is designed for business customers who require internet access outside of their core business system. This may include large mining operations, running crews for crew welfare applications or regional businesses with critical cloud business applications. Now the current speed tiers range from 30 down and one up to 30 down and five up and 13 down and 13 up. So now the new tiers will include 100 down and 10 up on the ABS L3 service, which is that initial one, and up to 150 down and 15 up on the same service, and then over to the 50 down and five up on the VISB service, and 100 down and 10 up on the same service type. Now these speeds sound pretty good, right? But wait till you hear the prices of the current plans. Now, some speeds are guaranteed, so that's 
due to being on business grade solution. So 30 down and five up with one terabyte of data is $4,749 per month on average. And if you want the symmetrical 13 up and down, that's $12,299 per month on average from the business suppliers. But wait, that's not all. For those systems, there is a $24,000 worth of hardware to install that you pay for. Now you can imagine why Starlink is so popular. Now Internet of Things connections are around $90 for 10 kilobits per second with a max of two megabytes of data. So think of things that just need to ping back where they are potentially. But let me clarify, the cheapest plans start from $429 per month for 30 down, one up, and 100 gigs of data, and VSP that includes an SLA of eight hours of turnaround, again, depending on the supplier. Now, I can't imagine how much the new tiers will cost, but the main draw card here is services like these cover 100% of Australia and surrounding islands, and then there is the 99.9 plus 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 availability of said service. And on that note, we have to end this episode. Let me know what you think about these business plans. Are you on one? Is your business using one of them? Let me know your experience so far. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then press the like button. And if you want to consider subscribing to us to support us or get notified when new videos pop up, then make sure to press the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you all on another one. Bye.